for me, uh, the reparation points at the fact that there is something about making ready again our relationship with ecological home, which is this planet. Relationship reparation. <laughs> this relationship hasn't gone anywhere. Like even in our bad relationship with this planet, we're still in relationship. In a sense, the, there is um, a need for appreciating and re-evaluating this essence of ancestry. For me, the most important thing is the, the understanding that this, this entire, the essence of our ancestry, the stories that we tell and we co-create and co-write with this planet, and I mean everyone, so all species, ultimately have a spiritual quality. And this is what science refuses to acknowledge. But I think in this sense, science is actually coming short because it's removing precisely the very thing that makes us who we are and who everyone is here. So human and non-human, including the planet itself. And we have used them and in a way have collaborated with those for a long time. This quality needs to reemerge, reevalu being reevaluated, reappraised, and, um, and reappreciated. And the quicker we do that, the quicker we are able to then understand at a much deeper level what is it that this land right here needs. Because then it allows that dialogue between the spiritual being that I am and the spirit that is in the land to communicate the first of the critics of science in the sense I love science and as a scientist, I love doing science, but also what kind of truth are we arriving to by doing a science that is already based on a fallacy, which is the fact that you can be an objective, separate observer of the, the events that they are surrounding you. That again, denies that there is a spiritual aspect that embedded everything in and it just, uh, we can't get, get out of it. We can't get away from it. And the quicker we acknowledge that, the quicker we will do a science that actually um, might have a, a, an attempt to really acknowledge that perception and the, the description that science makes are very human and they are fundamentally spiritual. So how do you um, think uh, and approach and work with plants how do you make sense of plants and how do you feel and sense plants? How do you um, uh, do experiments and at the same time connect to plants in different ways? So um, Resonant Earth emerges from this. And Resonant Earth is the project, the name of this project that I would like to put forward. And, and it uses uh, science as well as uh, this spiritual love connection between the human and all of the other species and the planet itself. I guess it's an evolution from my work with the plants because it really is based on the fact that we can, we have done it for so long and we can listen and communicate with these others and with this planet. And we are so young as a species that is very arrogant, but typically arrogant of a teenager, <laughs> uh, to, to think that we know better. Instead, if we take the, a different position of like, uh, maybe we don't know much. Maybe if we, if we knew better, we wouldn't be in this mess. So maybe we don't know much, and maybe there are others which are not humans, but might be able to help us and guide us and teach us. So it's, um, yeah, that's what the, the essence, I guess, of Raisin on Earth and the regeneration of at the planetary scale uh, for me is about. Being open to the, to the sounds of the universe and how that might come, your, your feelings of it in terms of activism. Well, uh, I guess what, uh, what I hear is um, giving voice. It's really the activist act here. Uh, you know, we're still even discriminating amongst within the same species, let alone living, giving voice to other species and let alone giving voice to the planet itself. 
But I guess this is what we are asked to do now. And maybe that's why so many voices are arising from so many different environments, so many different colors, uh, so many different backgrounds. And, uh, and it's amazing because um, in this sense, we have the technology that, as we know, is now supporting these voices to be heard everywhere if one wants to. Of course, in the chaos, there, is also, there are also voices that are just sometimes maybe just making things more confusing. Uh, but it's important that we develop our discrimination as well. And so in that sense, we are actually reviving really the spirit of science. It's like uh, consider all the possibilities by use the discriminant mind to see what is really happening here in front of you. And then when you think you got it, question it again <laughs> so so that it doesn't become a dogmatic position. I think we are learning to listen. We have to, but uh, it's happening naturally. We are learning to listen to each other and to different positions in a different way. And I think a sign of maturity for our species is going to be when we are able to listen to to positions that we uh, judge as um, contradictory. You know, either or, it can't be this and that. It needs to be this or that. But we also know that in nature is not like that. And we are nature. So how can we be like that? There is the question, how do we overcome the zoocentric, um, let alone anthropocentric, but more broadly zoocentric um, attitude that we have we need to embrace our own anthropocentrism, but in a good way, not, not because we are special. Do you know, the, and I have written that many times myself, is like anthropocentric positions are dangerous because uh, they put us in a, in a special place that not only is special, but is also at the top of. So again, there is this hierarchical situation where there are lesser um, which for us means less valuable, less um, useful, less um, deserving of our respect, um, others. And um, that is not the anthropocentrism that I'm <laughs> you know, promoting. What I'm thinking of is more of the, in, on the sense of we are humans. So this is the lens through which we experience the world. Maybe in the next life, I will be a plant and I will be having my plantocentric perspective. But for this time around, with my anthropocentric perspective, if I keep pretending that it's not there, and it is, it's the same problem that we have with the subjectivity, objectivity of science. If I pretend that it's not there, but it's still acting because I'm st this is the filter that I'm embodying, um, then it's dangerous because I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, it, it will inform action and thoughts and approaches uh, without me having the ability to see where they're coming from, without the ability to question them really. While if I embrace anthropocentrism, then I can also realize that, okay, so this is my lens. I acknowledge that I am biased and it's okay. And not even like human in general, but my way of being a human. So my own subjective way. If then we approach this way, it is with all of our humanity that we encounter the other. And there is no expectation that the other knowing that like, hey, I'm biased. And so I'm going to see you in a particular way, but I would really like to see you as much as possible as you. So the acknowledgement of our humanity is important because it gives the space for the acknowledgement of the other and not acknowledging that or trying to get rid of anthropocentric perspectives in this sense, um, it's inhibiting the, the conversation with this other. The land contains this ancestry of our own. So it's, it's almost like a, the land is a record keeper of the human species through time. And, uh, and he also does it through the, the story that it contains about us. Our own humanity has, uh, you know, has been here for a while. And, uh, and although it looks like it's so different from, you know, 
200 years ago, a millennia ago, but reality is like it's still the same human really connecting with the same earth, despite on the, surf on the surface all of the changes. And so I think that, um, of course, we are seeing a, a reevaluation and resurgence of all the indigenous uh, practices, indigenous knowledge, which I think is very precious because it's, uh, it's almost like, a, for me, it feels like a gateway into reconnecting with this, um, yeah, with our own roots. Because at the end, we are all humans and we are all anse ancestors to someone, hopefully, that will come after us. And so we are also the, the generation that came after someone. <laughs>